Welcome to Balatro's Ultimate Guide. Celebrate the recent release of this addictive production drop inducing video game, I wanted to create a useful guide to see some basic tricks, tips and strategies to make your runs improve significantly and reach anti-8 with no sweat at all. Hop in, grab some snacks because it is going to be a wild ride. Okay, let's do a quick recap. In Balatro, the main objective is to beat anti-8 and to do just that, you'll need to go through each one surpassing the small blind, the big blind and the boss blind. You need to play hands to score points, which rewards you different amounts of chips and molds depending on how hard it is to get the hand you scored. Bosses have special abilities, such as disabling one of your suits, and each blind has a score requirement bigger than the previous one. Sounds good? Well, the main philosophy you must pursue playing Balatro is the classic CMX formula. Chips into multi into multiplier. Let's look at this strategy with detail, shall we? There are several jokers that give you chips if you meet certain requirements, like the slide joker, which gives you 50 chips if you score a pair, or the banner, which gives you 30 chips for each remaining discard, or even the odd tot, which gives you 31 chips for every ace, 9, 5 or 3 or 7 that you play in a hand. Chips come in large quantities, and they are great for the early game and most of them are obtained through common jokers, which are quite affordable. While securing your chip source, you can pair it with a multi-joker, just to get a nice combination that can get you through antis 1 to 4. The OG joker gives 4 molt every single hand, the half joker gives 20 molt if your hand has 3 cards or less, and the abstract joker gives 3 molt for every joker card you have in your possession. If you have successfully acquired a chip source and a molt source, you can then move forward to the next and final step which is getting a multiplier joker that works with your deck. This is really important as most runs will be lost precisely at this point, especially if you are a beginner player. Although there are some types of builds that can reach anti-8 without a multiplier, that is a feat often attempted by seasoned veterans, who know the intricacies of Balatro and know how to play around them. So, which type of jokers give multiplier? Well. There is the trio, which gives up per 3 molt if you score a 3 of a kind in your hand. The acrobat, which also grants a per 3 multiplier on the last hand of the round. Or the baseball card, which gives a 1.5 multiplier for every uncommon joker you have in your build. With a chip source, a molt source and a multiplier joker to put the cherry on top, most runs will succeed and as long as you manage correctly your economy and don't play recklessly for most of the time, Victory is easily attainable. Multiplier jokers work really well in late game and high antis, but if you don't have a mold source yet or high level hand types, you will struggle if you get them in the early game. During the late game, you can also prioritize two multiplier jokers instead of getting a chip source, a mold source and a multiplier source. You can discard the chip source, usually, as at that point, having played enough planet cards will grant you enough chips to get through the game, and two multiplier jokers can make your molt go to insane heights. That's why they work so well on late game, but if you don't have a molt source yet or high level hand types, you will struggle in the early game if you get them. That is the main reason you will want to save them for last, so if you get by a rare joker that gives a multiplier during the first antis, consider buying it carefully, as sacrificing your other jokers or your economy to get it might be detrimental to get through the run. Although that is the main gist of the game, CMX, chips to mold to multiplier, there are a few considerations to add to this Balatro approach. Firstly, there are jokers that provide abilities unrelated to chips, mold or multipliers. There are those who give economy like the business card joker, granting $2 one out of two times every time a face card is played. Economy jokers are great during the early game to guarantee that you have enough funds to get your chip, mold and multiplier sources. Other jokers might give tarot, planet or spectral cards and although you should consider them, make sure that they suit your build and that you are going to trigger them as much as possible or that you have enough spare money to afford them. Secondly, 
Throughout the whole run, it would be wise to try to transform your deck along your efforts to obtain a chip, molt, and multiplier source. This is usually done by picking a hand type that you prefer and sticking to it, leveling it up through planet cards and using tarot cards to make it more likely to get that type of hand. As an example, let's say you want to build your deck around flushes, which is very common. Let's say you have acquired the Crafty Joker, which gives you 80 chips every time you play a flush, and you have also used two Jupiter cards, leveling up your flush so it gives 65 per aid. Well, in that case, using Tarot card to get as many spade cards as possible is a good strategy to keep in mind while going through the blinds and building your deck. Seasoned players going after high antis tend to switch mid-run to flush 5, flush house, 5 of a kind or high card to reach the highest scores the game can bear, but that is not necessary if you just want to win a run. Finally, you will encounter very frequently a situation in which through a booster pack, you can pick between a card that gives you economy or another one that keeps transforming your deck, such as that we previously mentioned. In most cases, choosing the economy card will always be more beneficial in the long term, as interest built on the money you hold and keeping 20 bucks or so on your wallet at all times guarantees you a good run. Now we will overview some tips centered around small things you can do to maximize your resources and use each joker in Balatro efficiently. Perhaps you know most of these little tricks, but I bet there is at least one you didn't know before and that it will become very useful on your runs. Right off the bat, the first tip that comes to mind is to shop according to interest. As you may already know, interest is built in Malatro by holding dollars and it gives you one additional bucko for every five of them you have at the end of a blind round. So by making your shopping keeping that in mind, you can arrange your decisions so they work in your best interest and you earn as much money as possible. Because you know, money is king in this game. So, as an example, if you have $14 and you want to get a joker that costs 4 you're still going to earn the same interest either way, so it is a purchase that it's not going to be detrimental to your run. The next tip is to try to get a first hand clear on the first small blind of the run. To do just that, you'll need to score 300 points, so I would recommend aiming for a flush, a full house or a straight. The easiest to get from those three is a flush. But if you have cards below an 8 or a 7, you might just not reach the 300 score requirement. And why do we want to get a first hand clear? Well, because each remaining hand gives us money, and by clearing the blind with the first hand, you'll be able to do more purchases and set your run nicely for the first antis or build interest faster. In white stake, doing a first hand clear on the small blind gives you $10, which is a $2 interest if you decide to not buy anything, and it also can make for quite some purchases. In higher stakes, or in the dangerously fearsome gold stake, doing a first hand clear on the first blind earns you $7, which is just enough to buy a joker and a tarot card, a planet card, or something else entirely. Every time you open a mega buffoon pack, and you're only interested in one joker, pick up one you don't like and sell it, and then choose the joker you intended to keep for your run. Unless there is a specific joker modification in play, tarot cards that are being held currently cannot appear in booster packs, so this can help you narrow down the search for a specific one. And speaking of that, if you have a temperance or hermit card in your arsenal, be sure to efficiently use it. If you can, wait until you earn through the blinds $20 to use hermit, and buy all the jokers you want from the shop before using Temperance. This is also applied to some Spectral cards, for example. If you have a Hex card or an Ankh card, and you want to use it on a specific joker, then the best strategy is to sell every single joker you have to earn some spare change and then use the card, as it guarantees you to hit the right target and you also get some extra money. If you have the Sigil or the Ouija card, and you can afford to wait, there is a boss blind that deals you 3 cards every time you play or discard a card. So abusing that and maximizing your hand 
can turn half of your deck into a same suit or number in one swift stroke. For those who are trying to clear a gold stake, I also have a few tips that can make the road to glory easier. Firstly, as everyone says, feel free to skip the small blind if you think you are not going to get any money out of it and your economy won't let you buy anything from the shop, as it is more valuable to have a rare joker tag, for example, than to clear a blind and just get $1 in return. Perishable jokers still add to the total sell value, even when debuffed, so if you have negative jokers, it is wise to keep them even when they do not work anymore as they will count towards a temperance card and the jokers that work around sell value or the number of jokers you have. Just like perishable jokers, eternal jokers can also be abused in combination with Hex or Ankh spectral cards, as they won't be destroyed by its effects. The same occurs when synergized with Madness, which gives a very viable run of eternal jokers with a strong multiplier. Rental jokers are not advised until later antis, as building your economy is one of the top priorities in gold stakes. A rental joker in the early game will nullify your options to build interest and thus you will lose your run almost every single time. And so, with every tip covered, let's take a look at some base builds and common synergies that you can apply for your runs at Balatro. The Hologram DNA Certificate Blue Joker Combo this setup revolves around adding new cards to the deck to scale the multiplier the Hologram Joker provides. In each blind, you will be getting a 0.5 multiplier just by playing DNA and Certificate, which will also in turn buff the blue Joker and give you an increasing chip source. Pair these Jokers with a multi-card, like Spare Trousers, Abstract Joker or Fortune Teller, and you're already able to aim for the win. Playing tricks can also be very valuable to get extra cards from the shop and make sure to open as many booster card packs as you can. The Egg Joker, Swashbuckler, Gift Card and Ceremonial Dagger. This synergy plays around with the sell value of Jokers. Swashbuckler adds Molt equal to the total sell value of your Jokers, which gets upgraded every single round by the Egg, that earns sell value by 3 through every blind and the gift card, that increases by 1 the sell value of every joker on your hand per round. So every time you play a blind, you will get an increasing sell value that Swashbuckler will benefit from it. Combine it with a chip source or a multiplier of your liking and you are done! If you want to convert all of this into raw mold and cash in your money and sell your jokers, you can use the Ceremonial Dagger to get absurd levels of mold once you have a neck with a very high sell value, but that's up to you. Mystic Summit with Burglar and Raman This one is pretty simple. The Burglar adds 3 hands to any blight you play against, but at the cost of losing all your discards. However, this works wonders for Mystical Summit, as it will give you its plus 15 mold since the beginning, and with the Raman Joker, you will have the per 2 multiplier all the time online and ready to go. Added a chip source and you are all set. The Oopsol 6 plus Lucky Cat combo. Oh yeah baby, this one is based around luck and we actually did a build like this on the one receipt video we did not so long ago, so check that out if you want to see how it works. Oopsol 6 doubles your odds to trigger a luck based event, and paired with Lucky Cat and a handful of Lucky Cards, you will be getting lots of mold, money, and a multiplier that can go to the moon if you want to. This combo also benefits a lot from hanging chat, which can re-trigger a lucky card two extra times to make it proc more often. This can also be paired with the Space Joker, which would have in this scenario a 50% chance to upgrade your hand type, and it would also be good to combine it with Bloodstone, which will give you a guaranteed 1.5 multiplier for every hearts card you play. The Burn Joker Stunman Duo. This is a very well known combo, and although it requires two rare jokers, it is not that unusual to see it in, on your runs. The Burn Joker upgrades the first hand type that you discard at the beginning of a blind, while Stunman gives you 250 chips at the cost of reducing your hand size. So, what is your job if you encounter these two jokers? Well, that is to upgrade the hell out of high card and with that, the run is very likely to succeed. Fortune Teller into Vagabond into Campfire into Credit Card. 
This one is not as famous as some other synergies in Balatro, but I swear it can be really fun. Fortune Teller gives you Molt equal to how many tarot cards you have played. Easy enough. Vagabond Joker gives you a free tarot card every time you play a hand and you have less than $4 in your pocket. It is really good to get tarot cards, but at the same time you cannot use the shop that much. But that's when credit card comes in, letting you go $20 into debt. Combine that with Campfire, a rare joker that gets a 0.25 multiplier for every single card or joker that you sell. And you can see where this is going? Yeah. With Vagabond generating tarot cards constantly, you can first use them to upgrade Fortune Teller and also modify your deck and later sell them to upgrade Campfire, getting a high mold source and a sweet, sweet multiplier. With a cheap source of any kind, this combo will get you past anti-9 or 10 and even further if you play it well. However, keep in mind that Campfire resets after every single boss line, so make sure to sell enough tarot cards before you get into the boss line once again, because if not, you will not be able to maximize its multiplier. And finally, I've saved for the last one one of the most well-known combos out there, the face card combo. This one revolves around face cards, obviously, and it can vary from run to run, but it mostly goes like this. Scary face plus smiley face plus pareidolia plus photograph. Now every single card is considered a face card, which gives 30 extra chips and 5 extra mold, and the first one also gets a per 2 multiplier, thanks to the photograph joker. That's the base of this setup, but it can go way beyond your wildest dreams. Sock and Buskin will retrigger every single card, doubling the effects of the combo. Midas Mask will turn every single card into a golden card, which can then be paired with either Golden Ticket to make a lot of money, or with Vampire, which will get a 0.5 multiplier upgrade per hand and get ridiculously broken. Business card can also give you a lot of money and the same could be said for the Faceless Joker. Just be careful to not encounter the boss blind that disables face cards or you will have a potential run killer right there. So make sure to buy Director's Cut voucher to reroll the boss if it ever appears. And that's the ultimate guide to Balatrol. I hope these strategies were useful to you and that you can now be able to beat NT8 and crown yourself king. It has been a while since I've done a tutorial and I was excited to do this one, just as I am excited to know what will include the gameplay expansion we're getting in 2025. If you have any useful tips you think I have forgotten or any question, feel free to use the comment section below, right for that, and perhaps I will do another Balatro guide this time to reach the extremely difficult Infinity score. Thank you so much for watching the video and, as always, until we meet again.